but, uh, but what we're seeing here is a bronze model of something taking place, again, probably in the temple in a ritual setting. Uh, the specifics of it are unknown, but we have a series of objects, overturned bowls, two individuals facing one another, engaged in some sort of activity uh, with a series of altars. And these are clearly altars uh, from other examples that we have from the temple. The um, specifics, again, are unknown. A large pithos, right? We've seen pithoi before. Uh, this picture's at Hattusas, storage vessel. Uh, but uh, again, just an attention to um, dedicating a model of, a, uh, of an actual ritual taking place. So the Sit Shemshi is unique, actually, in uh, the entire ancient Near East. We don't really have anything like this. Um, under the reign of Shatruk uh, Nahuti, around 1155, again, we see the continuous sacking of, um, of uh, Mesopotamia, uh, in addition to uh, consolidating Susa and Anshan under uh, uh, one major, you know, major power, uh, he conducts these raids into Babylon, bringing back a number of objects. And it's actually, this is the king in which we see these objects like the Naram Sin Stile, like the Code of Hammurabi, all those Kaduru, uh, all these objects are taken as war booty by Shutruk Nahunte. Uh, and brought back to Susa during this time. So this is when these things are, are actually brought over. And we can see um, that they're actually very important for a number of reasons. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of influence and a second sort of life in Susa. We already talked about how the stele of Naram Sin was rededicated. There's an Elamite inscription on it right here. So it's rededicated. Uh, but some of these monuments are actually copied outright. We can see here, uh, for example, uh, this is a stele of an Elamite ruler, a uh, later one, but, uh, but you can see the parallels here. This is almost a one-for-one -one copy of the investiture scene on the top of the Code of Hammurabi. So, uh, so these uh, Elamites, as different as they are, as different as their architecture is, again, they're drawing on Mesopotamian um, Mesopotamian cultural norms. We see that in the stele. We also see it in architecture too. Uh, these are some brick reliefs from Susa, and you can see the comparison here uh, with what we saw at Babylon, right? Do, at the uh, Karanindash temple, right? At the same time, Susa adopts these motifs and starts making brick facades for its temples using a very similar uh, sort, of, uh, sort of method. Uh, again, different iconography. We see these bull men, an emphasis on the temple, or I'm sorry, on palm trees uh, and uh, central goddess, but, uh, but the parallels are very clear. So, um, so again, Elam is now at the end of the Late Bronze Age participating for the first time in this international, um, international system and doing so. Um, it's unfortunate we don't have letters where you know, the Elamite kings, like the Assyrians, are saying, oh, we're great kings now too, let us into the club. Uh, but we imagine that this is uh, what's happening during the reign of these kings. So any questions about Elam, about Babylon, Assyria, these cities? No? Okay. All right. Well, um, have a great break. Um, hope you'll have time to take a look at that looking assignment uh, while you're there. And um, I'm going to be around today if anybody has any questions. And uh, if not, we'll see you not next week, but the week after.